So let me get this quote out real quick, man. Right? Hold on. This is from one of my favorite creators, Hayao Miyazaki. You must see with eyes unclouded by hate, see the good in that which is evil, and the evil in that which is good. Pledge yourself to neither, but vow instead to preserve the balance that exists between the two. Night show. Oh, let's do this going. Yeah, eyes, eyes. I'm going to do the goody shit. Eyes. Eyes. <laughs> eyes. 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 out here like daddy. Mm. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. We ain't going nowhere tonight. Uh, <laughs> um, yo, thank y'all for joining us on this uh, very, very Long Beach podcast uh, we're back in southern california i have my brothers with me and it is a blessing to be here uh, i just want to say it's been four years since we thought this since, since we got this thing going on and uh, i'm honored to be with these men today I have my boy my number one spades partner here y'all yes, remember sir. him from a few podcasts ago mr jeremy sullivan said what's up big fellow Twin Towers, Twin Towers Twin all towers, day, though. Sir Sully the Great. <laughs> <laughs> snap, snaps. And of course, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. True Haru. Tower 7. <laughs> Full of fae. <laughs> Full of fae. Back again. Yes, sir. Time yes. later. Yes, sir. Years pass. Mm -hmm. Suns ups and suns down. <laughs> we have we have been on the rodeo, sir. We have definitely been on the rodeo. Oh, tsh, Wild West, <laughs> Wild Wild West. <laughs> Playing Mike Larry, yeah. chilling in the background. What's up, baby? You know what I'm saying, man, you know, make the world shake in the earthquake. You know, shit, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. Um, but you know, we've been having fun. But we've been talking about uh, some serious topics, and we wanted to definitely have this conversation for um folks who have ears for listening mm -hmm. um so we appreciate those who understand nuance and think, appreciate those who understand that um you can't have these conversations in 30 second little clips digestible yeah. on tiktok so <laughs> i appreciate the audience new old and the returning mm -hmm. um let's kind of delve into not just the romantic relationships we've had, but relationships we've had with uh, parents, especially our fathers, and how that's kind of shaped our reality and our world and, you know, our perception. And thus far, too, right? Yeah. Because we're just in the dirty 30s. Yeah. So how that's affected us thus far, mm -hmm. especially in ways that you didn't, you didn't even realize it was affecting you while it was actually affecting right. you the most. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> when it was doing the most to you, Bruh. you didn't even feel it. <laughs> like, I'm fine. The, the, the meme sitting in a burning house, like, I'm fine. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine. I'm totally fine. It, it was not fine. <laughs> Single parent household is regular. Fine. Right, that's I'm that's fine. what you, yeah, that's what we get used to. Right, that's we don't know anything different. Yeah, mamas and aunties and big mamas. That's fine. It's regular. Yeah. Uh -huh. No men in the house. It's regular. No, nope. until you start trying to be a man, and she get real different on yeah. you real fast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I guess I'll kind of go. I'll I'll start. I'll start. Um, I think the thing that always affected me, and uh, and let me know if that this resonates with y'all. I think the thing that always kind of affected me was uh, trying to find a mold to kind of fit in mm. because you don't have anybody necessarily to like in the house to like really emulate. Mm. Like my um, my grandfather, my yeah, my grandfather was around, but you know, he was an older man. Um, mm. And he definitely had some ways about him where it's like, you know, I go around the neighborhood and some of the old ladies whose husbands passed away, we'll go help them you know, write their yard and clean the clean the gutters and all this type of stuff, you know, cut wood and all that good shit. And that's good. Mm -hmm. And then all but like that's not my biological father. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't come from that man. That's my that's my grandmother's second husband. Yeah, what point was you feeling that? Right. Yeah, it's like I felt like um I felt like 
almost immediately. Mm. And I felt like school probably played a role in that because I remember we were probably like in kindergarten or first grade and it was we had an assignment where it was like, you know, tell us to break down your, your household structure. Like, what does it look like? So, you know, we got all the kids up there. and then just That's like, a oh. wild question looking mm. back at it right. to oh. ask a child. Yeah. <laughs> so wild. That's very, a wild question. Very, right? It's like, it. oh, what's your house look like? What are your, like, what are your parents doing? All that other shit. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> like, mama leave every night and bring the cash back to daddy. That's Bruh. what I see. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you got to hear around this. Right? <laughs> it's so, you don't know what kids is dealing with, man. They're like, yo, CPS. <laughs> You know what's happening? So I remember, and I'm just like, all right, but it's like, well, my mom and my older sister, and we have the same birthday, and then my aunt, and then her three kids, and my grandma, and my pop pop, and my great great aunt Lillian, and she's Native American. She lives in the basement because we moved her into our house because she's getting older. Mm. And all the rest of the kids are like, um, mom, dad, them, you know. My mom and dad don't have brothers and sisters. They're just single. You know, they were mm. only children and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's weird. I was like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, you ain't got no brothers and sisters, no cousins? Like, that's weird, bro. You ain't got nobody in the basement? You know what I'm saying? Nobody chilling on the basement? Like, all right, good, we're good. That's what y'all up to? Like, all right. So I ain't never going to your house on Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, so for me, it was like 12. Because, you know, I grew up. Uh, white side of the family, yep. 15, moved to the black side of the family, right? Mm-hmm. So didn't know the black side of the family until I was 15. Yep. So I had three white brothers, mm-hmm. right? So it, was, it I would notice things where it'd be like, I didn't know what I was feeling. You know, that kid would be like, oh, I went through puberty. I didn't know these feelings I was feeling. It would be like that. Like, I'd be like, I just don't resonate with these motherfuckers. And I mm-hmm. didn't know how to explain that. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was going through at the time. Yeah. Obviously, I love both sides of my culture. I do. Mm-hmm. I truly mm-hmm. do. But at the time, I felt like I was missing so much mm-hmm. that I didn't know I was missing. I was just like, I'm. I'm not fully, like, stimulated. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not reaching like what I'm actually like supposed to be. And it was fun. Like, I met my sister, 15, and it was instant. Like immediately, I met my sister, and then I met my siblings, my other two black brothers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, 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 oh this is this. Mm-hmm. This is what I was. And then I met my father, and, you know, he's not the greatest, but I would, like, no matter what, I'd give, it, it was, I couldn't stop it. I'd give him passes, mm-hmm. and I still to this day do. Mm-hmm. Because for me, like, I developed that ability to be adult by myself. Mm-hmm. It it definitely was helped. This This man right here is literally one of the main assistance in that, you know, he met me when I was 18. You're my guy, bro. <laughs> so I rode into manhood. Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't change a tire. Couldn't change no goddamn <laughs> oil. Couldn't do shit. Y'all don't understand what I've been through. <laughs> I couldn't get this man on the right path. <laughs> I, 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 I would just look at him like, bro, like, oh, say, dog. Uh, I'm out here on the side of the road, dog. I don't know what I, what I did. Mm-mm. I don't know what I you did. You and Monica and that, <laughs> that white beast was a uh, Mr. Mr. Beast Mirage. Mirage. <laughs> 1996. Bruh, mm-hmm. yes. I, the first time I had to change my oil, super funny. I was doing like uh, funeral honors. So I was I was like giving the final honors to uh, a deceased military member. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing my dress white uniform and my shit blew up on the side of the road. I didn't have, I didn't have a goddamn spare tire. I ain't have a tire iron. I have none of that shit. And I'm on the side of the road thinking I had that. Like, just how dumb I was in regards to that. I didn't even think I had it. Then someone gave me, like, a tire iron. So I take the tire off, but I don't have another tire. I, at this point, my white uniform is black. This is when I call Steve. Mm. Hey, uh, hey, dog. <laughs> I'm out here bad. He, this man went out of his way to go get me a spare tire from mm. the shop. And they came and put it on. It was, but what I'm trying to say is, once I figured out all that, I still learned, like, I would interact with my father, like, at least once a year. Mm-hmm. And I would interact with him in, like, short stints. Like, we'd go to lunch or I'd go see him at his job and we would just talk. Mm-hmm. And I would notice so many things that I was already doing or that I was thinking that he did. And it mm-hmm. was like, damn, like, this is so crazy because I didn't know him. And I was just, I had these mannerisms, these 
ideas. Oh, the mannerisms. Com- yeah, like they were just oh, they right. were just there, like just naturally. There. And I was like, I was like, God damn, like this motherfucker, like he he's like me. Hmm. And I was just, it was so refreshing hmm. to be like, oh, like there's someone else out there that thinks this way. Right. Because you know you can't control how you think all the time. So when it comes to you like that, I was just like, God, that, like. Mm-hmm. Well, especially you know coming from spaces where people, people try to make you feel like how you how you naturally are is wrong or flawed. Yeah. But it's really just them projecting things, right. you know. So for me, for me, I didn't grow up with my father at all. Like from from maybe two weeks old to. 14 I think I seen them like three four times in my memory that I have memories of and even those are short memories so it wasn't until just recently literally I don't know maybe like two three yeah, weeks ago a few that weeks. I actually that I that I took it upon myself to take that journey to where I knew he was this whole time you know what I mean? but growing up with just my mother and no knock to my mother love my mother and she did everything that she could do mm-hmm. as best as she knew to do it mm-hmm. but she always spoke to me in a way about my father where it's like i don't want you to be like him i don't want you to become like him right you know and just little things she'll point it out you know he felt like everybody was his friend and i don't want you to be like that you know he was you know very you know just 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 things that you you myself have no type of of grip on because i haven't even been around this man Mm -hmm. so i'm just hearing it i'm just hearing this shit and then to be 30 plus now hitting it and then go see this man Mm -hmm. and within two days feel like this the first time i've been around somebody where how i am is now no longer like a mystery Mm -hmm. or something to fight Mm -hmm. and then to hear the this person explain why they are the way they are right you know right my well my father so so sad because i already brought up i already brought up my mom saying she'd want to be like him because he felt like everybody was his friend Mm -hmm. but then when you hear from his mouth his story right you know and he was born from a 15 year old feel me woman his father left because of that Mm -hmm. so he was like the odd man out of his family from jump because he was almost like a mistake Mm -hmm. yeah and then when he grew up he wanted to do everything he could to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. Even his last name, he took his stepfather's last name trying to fit in, and even that didn't work. Yeah. They still abused him and all of that and all of that. Yeah. So he's now he's like sitting in my face like, why do you think I'm a Kappa and I'm a Mason and I'm a Shriner and I'm a Templar? Yeah. Like just listening off like I always wanted to belong to something. Mm-hmm. And then hear him say some people take that as a negative. And automatically I'm thinking of my mom because that's all she ever told me. Like it was right. a negative. But then you hear from him and it's like this make so much sense. So yeah. much sense exactly. why you would go this route. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like and 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 whoo. Looking at look at having that moment and then thinking back in my life where I was wondering how I was going to even become a man Mm -hmm. or what kind of man could I possibly be and then only being able to go to my mother for that answer not even realizing then like how could she possibly answer that question she was never a man right she Mm -hmm. was she didn't grow up she was never even him my father for sure right so so you know damn I can't remember I was going with that but (laughs) but that 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 not knowingness of, of 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 manhood and the lack of having that figure right there with you for better mm-hmm. or worse if they were a good man quote unquote or a bad man quote unquote whatever just even just it being there yeah it's it's effective and it's important because you get to 30 years old thinking I'm fine and now you boohoo and crying because this man is talking to you right Mm. just yeah. talking to you like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm sitting there talking to him he's just talking to me my bad he's just talking to me and i just start getting teary-eyed and i'm trying to hold it back and i'm holding it back for maybe a good two three minutes mm. <laughs> and the next thing you know he's just stopping to ask me like why are you crying and i just broke the fuck down because he was talking to me just right. his voice alone right. was so impactful all these years later it's yeah. like i didn't even know I missed this shit. Yeah. Right. It's it's such a crazy feeling to feel like uh it's it 
for me, it was like a, a challenge at first because mm. it was like a, a constant battle on do I feel vengeful, not vengeful, uh, do I feel do resentful, I, resentful mm. towards the people that led to you not having those interactions? And it's a hard pill to swallow because you, cause you, you know they tried. Like, you know they went out of their way to do their best under their circumstances, but their actions mm -hmm. still led to those circumstances. Yeah. So, yes, they did their best after they made the decision. Right. But they, they're still the person that made the decision. Right. Yeah. After she done locked your daddy out the house. Yeah. Like. And you're like. <laughs> <laughs> like and, yeah, she did her best after that, but it was after that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like. I had. Now, nah, this actually leads to the other topic. Like, for me, mm. I'm, I'm realizing it now that it leads to conversations with, with women that I, that I talk to or relationships that I get into or paths I go down are a lot, are, are just dr driving factors based off of that scenario. Because mm -hmm. for me, like coming out of that situation, my main focus was I do not ever want to be unsuccessful. Right. It was always my fear. Mm -hmm. My fear was not reaching my full potential. Mm -hmm. You always say it to me, don't, don't be a, a, a cautionary what? tale a cautionary. is my fear. It's how I never want to be and, a cautionary tale. And you said that tale. to me, it was exactly how I felt. I remember the first time you said that shit to me, and I was like, God. <laughs> but that leads to a relationship. So, like, I've dated some girls that, like, that were, like, really good potential. Like, I see potential with them. But mm -hmm. I was so driven on not being a failure mm -hmm. that... I definitely neglected relationships, right? Mm. So my goal, I had a list. I had a list put out for myself, right? Mm. I wanted a college degree before I was 30. Right. I wanted a dream car before I was 30. Mm -hmm. I wanted a house <laughs> before I was 30. Mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted to make first class in the Navy before I was 30, right? right? These are all things that I told myself that I'm going to focus on no matter what this is what I'm going to do, right? Mm -hmm. And there was relationships that took back doors like they were. Mm -hmm. Like I took... There was a whole relationship where it was it was great. Yeah, but you put them on the back burner. Well, no, I, I wouldn't even say I put them on the back burner because I was never like, I would never say I was neglectful. Mm. I would just take situations that led to those other goals more seriously. Mm. Like I took a deployment to Bahrain and then I doubled up twice. Right. That obviously, if you're dating someone, I could have I could have stayed in America. Right. I could have mm -hmm. I could have went to a ship. And I could have been there for half the year and, and not dealt with anything, but I chose. Yeah, but you made choices that benefited your goals more than the relationship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I was always thinking, oh, well, you know, if they really care, they're going to be there. And it's not, that's not the case. Like, the, that's a big misconception because they are there, but they're only there until a certain point. Right. Because at some point, even if you are focused on the, your goals would lead to ultimately better things for them, because it will. Mm. Yeah, one hundred percent. In the meantime, in the meantime, it's tough, tough, tough it, titty. It is. Tough titty. <laughs> it is. <laughs> they see so, the back streets. Mean back streets. Imagine that's. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, cut oh, you. Yeah. You good? I, I would say especially because, like the the Navy path, like yeah. the meantime isn't like great times. No, it's not like it really. So it, like you know sometimes people be like, oh, I was there for you with the jump. We had some good times. Well, it's not even that. Like. <laughs> Because, you know, like, you be hearing these stories about, like, oh, we were together when we had nothing, and then yeah. you made it, right? But the military's even double that. Because we didn't have shit, and I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. it's like, yeah. it's like double down. Yeah. So then now, now I have all these things, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I hit all those goals, right? So I made a new list of goals, right? Mm -hmm. But one of those goals is I, I don't want to be an old-ass daddy. Never wanted to be, right? So you feel like some of these goals are bouncing off of your your relationship with your father or lack thereof? Yes. Like to, to achieve so much, to have it together. Yeah. That will make you start to, to, to prioritize these goals over a relationship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And But now, like, that's one of my goals. I, I don't want to be an old-ass daddy. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I don't want to just, you know shoot right. the club up some random place like i'm not i'm not trying to do that yeah or some yeah. random some random woman and all that shit man yeah and that that's it, it, it's a it's a that's the struggle man honestly it, it, it's hard because, that's the struggle because i'm looking for someone but 
you know, a lot of times when you look, you don't find shit. So, like, you kind of just got to let it happen. Yeah. But no matter what I do, even if I'm doing great things, I'm working on my master's right mm -hmm. now, like, I'm, I'm, I'm putting in my officer package. I'm doing all kinds of shit that mm -hmm. are very beneficial, right? Mm -hmm. In the back of my mind, TikTok, TikTok, exactly. TikTok, it just goes on. Yeah. Even though like, I'm only 30, like, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But I do bath in my head. I'd be like, oh. Well, if I wait until I'm 38, right. like when they grow, I'm gonna be 50 something. Yeah, when, right. Right? Like, like, and I be thinking about that shit. It's a different time. It's a different time. It's, a yeah. different time. Yeah. it's that whole thing, you know, just looking at. Like I be telling my boy Larry all the time. Where is Larry? Right here. Right there. Mm -hmm. I be telling Larry like, bro, it's like you know, we ain't gonna make it out this decade without the moth springs. Yeah. This the decade. Mm -hmm. yep. I swear to God, like making it through the 20s is one thing, and I got through that, but I highly doubt. Even in this room, y'all niggas ain't making it. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I, told, I told I told this this nigga the other day. I, I told him this a few times. He's the only thing that is keeping me completely out the game. Don't let this man hop up and have a girl pregnant, because then I'm gonna really have a problem. Because oh man, because like okay, so like I'm the youngest I'm the youngest sibling of all of my brothers, my brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, like. And I'm talking about there's gaps. Like my sister, she has a what he's 22 now. Oh yeah. And then Damn, my he's 22. Yeah. And then my brother's youngest is two, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're all in between. Like mm -hmm. the whole bunch, all in between, right? At the earliest, if I got a girl pregnant tomorrow, mm -hmm. they three years behind everyone else in the family, and no one else is having kids anymore. I'm the last of the Mohicans. I'm like that too. When exactly. If I have a kid, they gotta be the youngest kid. That's what I'm of saying. This generation. Same. And all I, my cousins have kids. Yeah. All my, my sister has kids. Like it's it's Actually, just me left. I yeah. feel so strongly about the tribe. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a tribe from your family, where's that tribe gonna come from? Right. Right. Your group. You're right. right. Your inner circle. Right. Right. So. Right. Nah, yeah, I feel that. Let me know. Let, let me know. Man, if, you, if, you go, if you go, if you go, if you go, if you get to that point where you like, yeah. uh, I might. I'm, uh, let me know. <laughs> Give me a warning, please. Now I might just go on and let this one go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I feel that though, man. I feel that. And I had this last time I went back home uh, to Maryland to go see my pops. Man, we just had a mm. very long conversation. It's been the most. I've been really been like on his ass about like mm. digging in his brain about how my grandfather was mm. when he was young and married to my grandma and that whole situation. Yeah, yeah. That that man was out out in the streets and he found God and he got himself together. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, and that worked for him. Um, but then my dad was just like, that's who I had to emulate off of. Like yeah. that's what I saw, so that's what I kept doing, and yeah. then that's what he did for a long time, and then he chilled the hell out. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, and just to go back to the point about you having all these goals that you want to knock out, you always going to have to like balance time that you give to your family and then time that you give to your career, your, your, your life's passion, whatever it is. And we all kind of have that whole like dynamic, that balance in that. It's like, you want a better life for your children that you have for yourself? Then you want to be at that office in that studio filming on some set mm. doing Man. all this other stuff right deployed somewhere that's where you're gonna have to go in order to get the accolades and make that shit happen See, or I, you don't have the resources to make the the quality of life that you want for your family that's better than yours mm. but your kids don't actually care because mm. all they want to do is hang out with their dad mm. they don't care what it is that's why like when i did get a relationship kind of back with my dad it was me and him laying tile and putting wood flooring yeah. down and all that shit. Like, it's crazy how that, right? those things. I mean, it was landscaping for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, I, like, I may have, might have hated it, but I needed it. Mm. So, like, in holding on to those memories and those lessons, realizing, oh, when it's our turn, that's what we need to be doing. Mm. Staying mm. close as brothers and basically... Just leasing out our sons and daughters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you better carry some wires for, for yeah. your uncle Haru. He got a set going on. We got a show out in Greece. <laughs> it is interesting because to hear you talk about how it drove you to have all these goals and want to accomplish them, for me, it was the opposite. I didn't have any goals. 
Yeah. I didn't I didn't I d I didn't Ooh. even expect to I didn't even expect to see life pass. Yeah. Twenty five. That's how I was. Mm. And I lived my life like that. Yeah. And when you live your life like that, you're not even thinking what am yeah. I gonna do with myself at thirty and thirty five yeah. and forty and thirty nine? That's not even it's like I'm gonna die mm-hmm. young, I'm out here. Yeah. You know, and and and, and, and you know, mothers can get overwhelmed by their yeah. young sons out here mm-hmm. and they might start thinking the same shit that you already thinking for yourself like yeah. he ain't even gonna see past you know he yeah. might die out here in these streets yeah. and so what was crazy was when I did turn 25 it was one of the weirdest feelings ever cause it's like I don't even know what to do mm. I didn't have yeah. a plan oh, I felt you I felt I you I had no nothing it's I like, felt yo, very aimless at 25 that, yeah see, and that's, that's why but look just to get in contact that's why I didn't have my first official tape The Art of Dying until 2015 that's so crazy cause yeah. cause it was you guys Steve has been there from the very beginning of me and when I joined the Navy right so I joined the Navy I literally like I was so oblivious to the world I didn't even know what Guam was yeah I was like Guam what's mm-hmm. that they were like an island in the Pacific I said that's America how <laughs> <laughs> they were like yeah, yeah, yeah like that's considered America colonization and I, and I said wait huh I was like I don't need a passport to go there they was like nah I said what alright let's go let's go and I went and I met him literally my first day. Thank mm-hmm. the Lord. Yeah, man. But literally from the beginning, my goal. So I didn't have these crazy ass goals. Those goals, I would say it was kind of similar because those mm-hmm. goals didn't develop until I was 25. Mm-hmm. The college thing, I didn't care about college. Mm-hmm. My only goal when I joined the military was to travel the world and see something different because I didn't leave Texas until I had a basketball scholarship. Mm-hmm. So I didn't leave Texas until I could actually do something so once I did something, I was like, oh, I'm going to be in the military for four years. I'm going to go as many places as I possibly can because who knows what I'm going to do after this. Right. And then in the midst of that, I developed those goals. The goals. Mm. And then now the goals are just like like beating in. <laughs> like, I I can't live without goals now. Mm. Like, interesting. Like, the second I finished, so I, the only goal I didn't finish on my entire 30 list was 30 countries in 30 years. I got played. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Cold, old Rona, cold. man. Old Rona got us. I, 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 oh. I was at 26. <laughs> I was at 26, and I was going to finish. I was going to finish that month. Like, I had I had four planned that month. Like, yeah. I was going to Amsterdam, and then I was going... Where was I going? I was going to Amsterdam. I was going to Paris. Yeah. And then I was going to... Um, actually, I finished at 27, because I ended up... I ended up actually going to uh, to Auschwitz in Poland, mm-hmm. but the other, the other I just literally was so convinced that I was gonna get to thirty by thirty, <laughs> and didn't didn't make it there. What about you, Larry? You got you got some? No, oh, man. So you have a, about this matter of fact. Go ahead, just take a quick second. You know what I'm saying? Slide in, give your perspective because you have a perspective that's unique to anybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh man, so. I have the privilege of being a junior, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's a whole mm-hmm. lot of complexity in itself. Oh, yeah. So, one, I'm named after a man that I didn't get to meet until my young adolescent years, and I didn't get to grow to know them as an individual until I was an adult. But um, one thing that I experienced as a very young adolescent, I'm talking about your grade school years. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say this for all the single mothers out there. I hope you guys are listening. Um if you have a young child, especially a young man, don't talk down on his father. Because Yeah, because man, that's yeah. Pull up on the mic, bro. You're, you're, Pull you're, up on the mic. You're attacking your son's masculinity when you say that. Mm. Because the even though he doesn't know that man, yeah. That's the first man that he wants to know. Just as much as you are the first woman that he grows to love, that's supposed to be the first right. man that he's supposed to And the to same love. thing with like daughters, you know, it's like the the men who are raising their daughters solo. You know, talking down on their mother is not productive. Not at, at all. all. And then, and then he, the, the 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 real complexity of the whole situation, as we bring these great levels of consciousness, is if you have so much negativity to say about that person, but you had the right and the ability and the love for them to give them a child, what does that say about you? Yeah, mm. yeah. And there's a lot of complexities. I mean, people who grew up with some some wild situations. There's women who have been like beaten. And, and yeah, all those, types of stuff those, by those the, you know, but those are those are different situations. Occur, 
Yeah. yeah. And uh, as as an advocate for ladies, I'm the uh, oldest of seven or five sisters. Mm. So trust me when I say, uh, Larry loves the ladies. You know, mm. Mike Larry loves the ladies with all my heart, baby. I I, I do love the ladies. Mm -hmm. But um, I won't tolerate no bitch assness. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't tolerate none of that bullshit. Even though I'm a Taurus, but bullshit. <laughs> <in the grass. laughs> so. And, I mean, and that's the thing, man. It's like it's it's, it's a double edged sword, and I and I feel for I feel for you know single parents who get in that situation where they have this horrible person that you know maybe they're narcissistic, whatever, you know, sociopaths, and they didn't see it. They had the wool in front of their eyes, whatever, and then they feel stuck, and then they're out of it, but they still dealing with that pain. Like it's you didn't cause that situation. The person who you might have you know end up having a child with might have not been the person who they presented you to be, man, but, you know, choose the light and love, man. Do All not go down this pathway where you're always going to be a victim to that person. Oh, yeah, because victims don't win. You know, you don't get paid to complain because if you did, a lot of people would be rich right now. So that's definitely something that's going to happen. But yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my personal experience about finding my father. So, you know, I'm four years old, five years old, so this is going to be my first time celebrating Father's Day at school. Obviously, I never really had to uh, converse about who my father was before then because it was mm. never really an important topic. But on this particular day, my mom's getting dressed, putting her makeup on in the bathroom, and I go in the bathroom, and I sit on the toilet, and I'm talking to her, asking about her day. And I'm asking her what my name is because, yes, I've been writing my name, but now you're talking about I'm conscious of things because I'm have been i asking myself questions. Yeah. So I'm asking her. Now, I'm conscious of my mother's name because, you know, I call her mom. Right. So now I'm, I understand that her her name is not mom to everyone else. It's right. only mom to me. Right. So I realized that, you know, that she's an individual. She's a human just like myself, even though mm -hmm. I'm only five years old. Right. So I asked her, I said, what's my last name? And she told me what my last name was. I'm not going to tell you because to y'all, I'm like Larry, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, then I asked her what her last name was. And obviously I went to a school in the West LA area, Westwood. So I'm around a bunch of multicultural individuals, you know, that have their families, fortunately. And the only other black people at my school aren't black, they're African. So they mm -hmm. don't have the same um, cultural background as I do because right. they obviously know where they come yeah. from and they have a, they have a national identity that yeah. is not tied yeah. to chattel slavery. Exactly. Yeah. So I asked her what my middle name was. And then I was like, wow, that's my name? And then she told me I was a junior. So I was like, hold on, junior means I'm named after somebody. Where's my dad? This is the first time you realize you don't your dad like. You, you got you know I'm I'm a kid. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as yeah, a, yeah. But as, 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 as a kid, crazy, as a kid, kid yeah. As, but as yeah. a kid, it's like it was important. Yeah. But my stepdad was kind of in the picture. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. it was important. But as long as I had games and I had friends and I can play and I can do childish right. things, you're not thinking about I, it. Wasn't important to gotcha. me. But now you're talking about I have to make a Father's Day gift. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, whose name? Whose name? Am I, whose, whose name am I gonna put on this Father's Day gift? Like right. this 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 card that I make with my face on it. Like, who am I gonna give it to? Is he dead? Like, what's going on? And that's when I found out that you know he was on vacation for a little while. You know what I'm saying? He had to sit down mm -hmm. and, and go and get gotcha. it right. And then um, you know, fast forward, I meet my dad for the first time, and I'm uh, uh, in fourth grade. I'm nine years old. We're doing some type of uh, event, some type of assembly thing where mm -hmm. we're doing like a presentation. He pulls up with a camera. I don't know who this guy is, mm. Mm. but you know I'm 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 popular. I'm a very in intellectual young guy. I'm bright. You know the women love me for some reason. You know it's just because it, it's, 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 it's in me. Man. I had this. You know it's, just, it's always been in me. I I, 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 I all praise to the pimp guy for that. Oh lord. Um, yeah. So this guy pulls up to the camera and says, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Mind you, I'm nine years old. Guess what I said. Hmm. I said I wanted to be the first black president of the United States. Mm. He looked at me and he started crying. Because here's this dude who, he knew who I was. Right. I didn't know who he was. I thought he was one of my friend's uh, dads. Right. And then he looked at me like, my son has a dream to be Obama before Obama. Right. Mm. Now, mind you, I also really looked up how to do it. Like, I talked to some of my colleagues when I grew up, and I was like, how do I become the president? 
But then somebody set me down and said, you know, you have more influence in the world as a businessman because mm -hmm. money changes the world. Politics slow the world down. So that's when that idea changed. But I did that because I wanted to give hope to people who looked like me because I didn't have hope myself. So I wanted to be a vessel for the things that I wasn't given in my life. Um, not because of lack of uh, resources, but just circumstances. And um, I'm grateful for the things that I've been able to receive from my parents. You know, my mom has a master's degree. You know, I had a good stuff. She's a six figures plus. Um, I have a little sister going to Harvard right now. I'm very proud of her. And um, I never truly went without, but everybody has their struggle. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that I always had food in my stomach. Yeah. And um, I had a roof over my head. Yeah. But the one thing that I acknowledge that I did like through my childhood is, I didn't have that emotional or psychological connection with the people in my initial household. Mm. And then the only way I was able to spend time with my actual birth father is I had to actually act up and get kicked out the house. Because that means that my mom wasn't able to really deal with me on the parental units yeah. aspect. Yeah. So I always yeah, thought I was getting kicked out. <laughs> I always thought that's what it was. It was, like, it was like, oh, I'm penalizing you because you're not doing what I want you to do. She rephrased it, and obviously this this just happened last year, so you're talking about 30 years of my life for me to get her understanding of it because she could have really articulated it because I have young parents. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, she articulated as she needed him to step up, but both of my parents are kids. I'm a I'm a uh, hit you with something. I'm born of immaculate conception. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm, I am I am that I am that guy. I'm born of immaculate conception. My parents lost their virginity to each other, and then uh, I came. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You're talking about a 14 and a 15 year old. So basically, Damn, mm, babies. I can hit somebody who's older than my mom right now. You know what I'm saying? And I've done it multiple times. I'm sick. Multiple times. So. <laughs> That's why I'm, you know, when people be like, oh, you a baby. I'm like, yeah, you know, I grew up with baby parents. Yeah. So my mind is different, you know, I'm light years ahead, you know, I move at the speed of light. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about just how I do things. Yeah. And that is, that is not a distance. That's a, right. that's a thing with time. But culture is very normal. If you look at like, you know, birthing practices throughout time, like young people, especially in that age group, you know, 6 to 18 and like 14, 13 to, to 18, like that is a very normal situation. However, it's like you have a community around you exactly. of elders to still be leading you and guiding you and molding you along that way. Exactly. That's but when you gone now. Yeah, when, yeah, when you the you, tribe, the, is, the gone. tribe is gone, and um, um, that's through a various uh, right? various variables. You know, the, uh, um, I have two very uh, extreme dynamics of family culture. Both of them are extremely family oriented. Um, and um, similar to the soul food situation, but both of them, when ahead of that, uh, when ahead of that situation fell apart, you know things have started to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. On my mother's side of the family, um, very well off family, you know what I'm saying multi-millionaires. My uh, great grandfather had at least eight pieces of property, and he was worth three million dollars in '93. He passed away um, in '93. Um, uh, that was the last time he held me. He went to sleep after he held me. He passed away. I have this special gift, man. I usher people to the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? Um, but my great-grandmother shares the same day of birth as my own mother. Um, I don't want to get into my mother's uh, trials and tribulations, but uh, I'll, I'll just ease into that shortly. Mm -hmm. um, they had this organization called the Sunset Club, mm -hmm. which is um, everybody in the family paid dues into it. Um, and by paying dues into it, you obviously... Every time you came over to my great grandmother's house, there was enough food to feed everybody. I don't care if it was ten people. I don't care if it was fifty people. Everybody had the same amount yeah. of portions on the plate. I don't yeah. know how she pulled it off, but um, she was great. I guess it's just, you know, it's just, how's how black women do things. Um, so that's how she kept that family unit together. But you're talking about the '60s are coming around and dope is getting real big, and there's this thing called heroin. This ain't drink chance, we champs drinking. Yeah. This, this is a thing called heroin and cocaine, or crack cocaine, I should say. And that started to eat away at my mother's side of the family because all that money that was in the family started to disintegrate because now you got to pay for people's mistakes. So we're starting over on that side of the family. Now I zoom over to my father's side of the family, which is the exact opposite. Um, they always came from the struggle and just had to figure out a way and make a way. And um, their experience with the uh, drug epidemic is, I'm a profit off of this motherfucker. So now you're talking about my great grandma. Uh, well, statue of limitations, I could talk about this. So now you're talking about. 
Slow down. My, my, uh, <laughs> Slow down. Well, my great grandfather was a pimp, man. You know, uh, uh, yeah, Charles yeah. Lee. Slow Charles down. Lee, the pimp, man. You know? It's in me. It's not on me. But my grand, my grandfather, man. Him and his brother. Um, I guess you could say they were the Chamber Brothers of uh, of South Central, man. I'm talking about. They get their Corvette stolen and let's go buy another one the next day because back in the day you had Hitman on payroll. You had a new Corvette driving down Crenshaw, and you had a few of the hottest women. One of them was my grandmother. So they had this thing called a, a carpet cleaning company, and they used that to launder all the cocaine money. They were, they were really buying bricks. Oh. <laughs> like, this took a turn. <laughs> 9000 to $10,000. Father so, and fatherhood. You're talking about my father was selling crack at five, six years old. Mm. Just because he was exposed to it, because it would have been, it, it could have been stocks and bonds if yeah, that was, you know, if, if, my, if, if that grandpa, was if the exposure, had, uh, right? Yeah, if my if my grandpa was wearing a suit and punching a clock, you know, it'd be different. But my grandpa was running the streets and, and and chasing booty and getting his money real fast, too fast for a man, you know, who didn't have any class. So he was just doing his thing, and he was, uh, I guess, what we call sperm donors. But he grew up, you know, you, you go to you go on vacation and you go to you go to Penn State and you get you a nice diploma. Mm, so mm, especially mm. when you're dealing with some federal time, you start to really learn some things. Um, so you're talking about now you got a dude who's in elementary, him and his brothers, they're out here running the streets doing what they're doing. They're getting money too. They don't respect education because they go from the school of hard knocks. So you have the dichotomy of my mother, very well educated, appreciates education. She's all about the book. And then my father, who's as street as can be, he can, he can, he can talk to the enemy and the enemy will become his friend. And then they create me so it's it's so my mom would talk bad about me because when i had my own opinions or i wanted to do things my way she would feel that was my father's side of me coming out and she right. was scared that i would follow mm, his right. rules i mean or, or his or his ways and mannerisms right because i knew how to weasel things i always had the gift of gab and i could talk myself in and out of situations right and then that's um, kind of a that's that's kind of a interesting like segue too because it's like you know, male and female dynamics when a child is trying to actually, like, you know, grow and develop their personality and, and trying to rationalize the world around them, it might come off as insubordination. But actually, it's just really this child's just trying to understand reality and has questions and it's not necessarily trying to be disrespectful, but it takes, especially when you have young parents like you did, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if if they're seeing you come up to him like that, it's like, oh, he being bad as shit, blah, 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 blah. But no, if you have a smart child, you're blessed to have an intellectual child. You're going to have to be they, having these conversations. Especially so, some, go, one go of the ahead, biggest mistakes people make is telling a smart kid they bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the worst bad. thing to actually yeah. do. Bad as hell. Like, yeah. is he being bad as hell? Or, or using smart as a negative. It, mm. Yeah. Like, you being smart, my mom, yo, you guys yeah. You're being a smart mouth, I'm like, what am I supposed to be? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you that, that you're just testing your, the fucking world around yeah. you, bro. Yeah. There's such your limits. And that's all yeah. it is. To further elaborate on that comment, the one thing I get in trouble for the most well, I got in trouble for, for several things as a child. <laughs> but the one thing I got in trouble for the most was talking back. When really all I wanted to do was talk my mind and speak my mind to get further understanding of the situation that was right. occurring. But, you know, being that she was my parental unit, it was I'm gonna dictate what's going to happen because this is my world and this is and you yeah. and you are within my world within my realm of control. Yeah. So you have to comply. Yeah. Or, or uh, comply because yeah. you know she, I wasn't given no options. It was ultimatum. Yeah. Um, as I as I grew older, because of that, because I was always shut down and I wasn't able to uh, articulate my perspective on things because yeah. everybody has their own perspective. Um, it started to. Uh, draw a wedge within my relationship with my mom and with that wedge with my mom I stopped respecting women because if I couldn't love my mom or have, or have my mom love me the way I wanted to be loved then how can I appreciate other women in my life because it just means that the love was speculative it was all about what I can do to benefit you in the in the name of this relationship not the fact that we were just supposed to figure out a way to cohabitate and live and grow with each other yeah because we did grow with each other she yeah. was a kid and now it's a baby yeah so yeah know, That's fast, a, fast forward she's in a better position she learned from it and i had to really break her down and like really spit some of this to her um 
very explicitly and she dropped a lot of tears and I was like, look, I'm not going to save your tears because I've experienced a lot of pain through the lack of me being able to articulate this as a child. And we have had such a tumultuous relationship because of this to the point where, you know, I didn't care where you lived or died. I wasn't going to drop a tear, but now right. I actually do truly care about her because, you know, I can appreciate her and yeah. her sacrifices, but she can also appreciate my trials and tribulations and the fact that I actually am who I am because she had a perception of who I was supposed to be and she had a perception of where the uh, route I was going yeah. in because of the choices that I made for myself. I think it's hard as a parent, too, because you have an idea of what you want your kids to be and, you know, you want them to have like a life that's going to be easier than yours. And mm. I'm sure her seeing your dad going the route that he did. She was proud as a child trying to figure out how do I make sure that he doesn't uh, go down this path and end up incarcerated or whatever. Like, and you know, it's it's, it's hard enough to be an adult and yeah. have to deal with that. But then you trying to be a baby and try to deal with that. That's wild, man. And that's that, why I give her kudos for that. Yeah. You know, she didn't she do it by herself. Shout out to my stepdad. Yeah. I yeah. said tricked out to one time. I had to call my mom and be like, I don't know how you did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, there was a full blown reality of it. Like, yeah. She really raised me. You did uh-huh. that shit though, and you was just another human being, just another woman in the world that made choices and is dealing with it and fucking still woke up every day like how I'm gonna keep all this shit afloat. The, yeah. Like we just hitting the age we at now, yeah. Yeah. having those concepts yeah. minus Right. One and two and three and four kids and yep. shit like we don't even have that. Yeah. The one rule I've always given myself and I'm staying so true to it no matter what, I will only have as many kids as I can financially give them anything they want in the world without giving them anything they want in the world. Mm-hmm. Because I get that. because I realized early on that it's hard enough to raise a kid, period. Period. It's a whole nother beast. When, like city girls. It, right, exactly. When, <laughs> period, oh, Lord. Like, period. I came right in with yeah. it too, like, period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a whole nother beast when you're not financially in that position. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember, like, oh, I used to hate it. I remember I used to. Get up on the mic, man. I used to come home from summer school. You know, go to school. You all excited from school. Some, summer, whole summer. What I do, I went to the library. Mm. I went to the park down the street, play yeah. some tech. Good, good summer, right? But I go home, I go to school, and it'd be like, oh, I went to Disney World. Oh, I went to New York, and it'd be all these random ass vacations. And mm. I went to summer, I went to summer camp, and I'd be like, man, I went to the museum once. Like, right. and it was always always thought like that. Like, I never wanted kids to have to like me to pick and choose experiences they get to experience in life mm-hmm. and i feel like that people raising kids a lot of the struggle is financial like it is like and they're dealing with financial so much that they sometimes lack in the actual aspects of raising your children not everyone it's so deep bro we in a generation that's putting off even having kids Definitely right. all finance. Yeah. Not because they don't think they're mentally ready. No, I'm saying. That they couldn't raise a kid with this right. person. It's like, oh, I don't think I had the money for this. So we're just putting it the fuck mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Have you seen that movie, Idiocracy? That, yo, it's yeah. literally Idiocracy. I was just about to say okay, that. Okay, ain't that it's an interesting piece? Yeah. Because it's like, yo, the, the smartest people are trying to be so smart that they're not procreating. Exactly. Meanwhile, the rest of the motherfuckers is procreating like shit. Right. By the time your kids are adults, or if you even have kids, right. they're adults. They're outnumbered by people that don't think nothing like them. They're not as even as wise as you because no. mm. you waited so long. And I feel like I'm trying not to become that right now myself. Right. And it's like there's so many self-sufficient people, and I see this. And it's hard to like even like date right now. And that, to to bring it back to another point, it's like how we were talking about the doing the whole segue to like relationships and how that, all that, yeah. all everything that we've gone through now. Like now we thirty. Yeah. Plus, and yeah. it's like, oh, okay, the thing got to figure it out. I I'm gonna think, help. Yeah, yeah got to figure <laughs> it out. I'm in a healthy spot financially. I can do this. Now yeah. let's try and sit here and try to have this this baby with somebody who's like minded. And I feel like society is basically <sighs> society is selling the narrative to so many people right now that having the child is unaffordable. Right. Like you can't do it. It's right. it's impossible. It's then I look at ja- yeah. Then I look at Japan and I look at some other Asian countries and I'm just like, oh, your birth rate is a negative. Right. 
in 20 years, you're not going to have enough young people to take care of the in generation that's going to be retiring. Right, and it's already affecting this right. generation. Yeah, and, and they see it now. Now companies are literally giving people time off to go on dates, yeah. to mm -hmm. have children, yeah. because they know, they see what's going to happen. Yeah. In due time, there just will not be enough youth yeah. to support the system. What's well, even the craziest shit is looking at, because, you know, I've been genealogy shit, yeah. looking at census records. And looking at generations that were going through what we would consider the hardest of times mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. having five, six, seven, eight, nine kids, and what that promise was for their genes, what? for their yeah. bloodline, yeah. the promise of a future. Exactly. You know, and it's like, and then we look now, and it's like, niggas, we look at a motherfucker have two kids and be like, Ooh, brother. Man. <laughs> right, I will not name no names when I be talking shit. You got four five. Oh god damn. But right. really, he really got the right idea. He, yeah. right? he yeah. really got the right yeah. idea. Well, I, well, Good I, or bad, rich or poor. Yeah. He got these kids, yeah. bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, she she out here healthy, happy, being able to produce children. Yeah. And it's good to go. Yeah. Seeing like down like long term, it's like Oh, when I get 80 years old, these children are going to take care of me. Yeah, they're going to look at me and think, Papa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no matter gonna what have grandkids. Down, look, no matter what went down, whether you was a poor yeah. granddad yeah. or a father or a rich father, right. at the end of the day, they're going to be like father. Right. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. And we sleep on that shit because of, cause of, cause of, I guess, this culture yeah. of just, you know, and also, it's also part of it is the wealth culture feeling like you got to be rich for you could do anything. Yeah, which be is trash. Anybody. Which now, is trash. I don't believe in the whole rich side of things. I just believe in the. I felt like I felt I felt enough enough discomfort in my own life, to where it's not even a rich thing. It's a basic, small. I wouldn't even say. Like necessity, because necessities are a definite need. But I'm talking about like nuances of life, like mm. experiencing things. I don't need to be just unbelievably rich yet. Because what do we mean yet? Uh, <laughs> we're gonna get, coming. We gonna get it's coming. coming. But <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying that I don't ever want to be like like if I had a child right now, some girl that I you know some had woman. some, some you, could roll, you could roll. I had some relations with and was like, hey, I'm pr I'm be like. All right, cool. Like, I, yeah, yeah, I could. But I'm not. I'm not pressing on it right now. But I'm just saying, when I was younger, mm. I would have those fears. Yeah, I don't have those them anymore. Generations. Yeah, though, mm -hmm. when you was younger, they wouldn't already been knocking, right. yeah. knocking them shits already. Oh just my god! It how it came? As Cause, many. Because it really comes down to yeah. the fear. It's like, yo, what do you really think raising a child means? Like, what do you think you need to do to raise this child? Yeah, you know that, the, the idea that you have to okay. So part of it's like I want to give them these experiences, but that's coming from a space. That's coming from somewhere. Yeah, from you, like a lack of experiences. I feel like I want to be able to give my kid right mm, these experiences. Because right. when they really come down to it, the idea of now you got a mini me on you mm -hmm. and you got to move him around with you. Yeah, it's just like when you eat, they eat. That's not actually that heavy. At all. It's not a heavy concept. It's That's like all. getting a puppy, nigga. Man. You get a puppy and he got to eat every day. You got to eat every day. 100%. Very simple. Very simple. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. But we're scared as shit because we don't even think we could feed ourselves. Which is day. insanity. Right. <laughs> and I, I, I was juggling this dude. And I was like, you know how many, you know how many uh, 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 pointless dates I've gone on and spent like too much money on women that I've never been on a date before ever again. Huh? Right. Huh? How many times I've just fucked off a bunch of money, right. not thinking about and like why the, did you do that? Why did you do that? And it was why like all of it was to impress somebody who I thought at one point in time may have been potentially uh, uh, I had been a good candidate for them to be a husband, and they would have been a good candidate for me. To be a wife. So it's the nature of it, really, right? Yeah, that's like it. A peacock. Yeah. You just peacock. Yeah. yeah. I just peacocking a lot, <laughs> trying to figure out what it was. Yeah. Spread them feathers. Yeah. Like. Now I'm older and I've slowed down and I'm being a lot more, using a lot more discernment and mm -hmm. and trying to be a little more wiser in my steps and my moves. Do you and ever feel like maybe we use too much discernment? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm saying, I'm too hard about it. What was that? I'm, I'm getting like, like too heavy. It's so hard that I ain't had no. 
yo, we, we ain't saying no names. The niggas out here with four, five, six kids. Like, <laughs> they got tribes going. Exactly. And we like brother. Exactly. And we like the golden, bruh. And they looking Any at us. in this room raising a child, you just can imagine the spectacularness yeah. of that. Brother, yeah. if any of us. <laughs> and neither of us have even started. If no. any, the like, second, that's powerful as well. Yeah. <laughs> the second any of us in this group has a goddamn kid, it's going to be set off. Yeah. <laughs> set off. 100%. The first one going to be set off. Yeah. 100%. Steve is first. You think so? I'm just saying that. Oh, it, I might, don't, it might be me. I, I don't think it's Steve. I don't think it'll be me. I, I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be me because I 100% think it's you. That phone call I got earlier, the way, way she was looking, she's going to have to get it. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I got to meet her mom ASAP. Oh, God. <laughs> Unless one of y'all niggas just... Let nah. that shit go, nigga. I'd subscribe. I've been 30 years in the game. I just... close by. What? You want what? I need a diamond close by before I just start shooting shit. Up. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> but that's that same mentality, though. But it's, it's, that it's not, mentality of it's I not need hard to, to get the diamond before I can have all Like, it's holding us back. See, I'm the, oh, I'm the opposite in that regard now. What? Like, and a lot of people don't like this. I do not need to be married to someone I would want to have a child with. No, and, a lo- sure. and a lot of people feel that, like, so differently. Bro, I've been, you see, y'all know the girl. Yeah. I've been with her for 10, 11 years. I told her from jump I never wanted to get married. But my uh, my my logic of that at that time and moving forward, I guess, to just recently was mm-hmm. the most solid thing you could do with somebody is have a child with them. Yes. Yeah. Like, you could go through in the future and be like, I never was with them. It's easy to say that. Just exactly. dating somebody, even marrying somebody. Yeah. Burn some paperwork, it's gone. When we were yeah. together. But you can't deny yeah, flesh. 100%. Yeah. Like, we here. I'm the proof that my mother and my father, oh, they did that shit. <laughs> like, you the proof. You the proof. Yeah, 100%. Minus you, there would be no proof. Exactly. And I'm telling my girl, like, I would get, I would definitely have a child. And I was more open to having a child mm. before I was open to the idea of marriage. Yeah. Coming from the background I had with marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, there's, there's this whole, and I think that's part of it because the state gets involved in so heavily in marriage like it becomes such a business deal such a business well, agreement we we know i'm an i'm an expert on this category. oh lord jeremy and in my youth so. <laughs> in my youth i uh you know had one of those things that people call marriages yeah Mm-mm-mm. and i was really young clearly and, <laughs> and jeremy, like, Jack, okay let me let me let me say something before you go down this path because I don't want you to tell yeah. the story. Because it's very important. Because I, 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 I hate having conversations with people. And they do not acknowledge that there are two parties involved. And that generally the conversation they hear is that it's the male party that is sus. And we've all come from relationships where men have royally jacked up. Mm. 100%. We've all come from that. Mm. However... Um, that is not always the case. And when I see y'all, I'm just like, oh, when I see my friend group, so I see my brothers, and I'm just like, yeah. no, we don't move like that. Yeah. That's not how we move. Yeah. Like, we're trying to be way better, way more involved. Yeah, if, if we're single, like, you know, if yeah. you and I are single, if Larry was single or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, we would move different. But at the same time, there's still a level of discernment to it. Yeah. But when it comes to the relationships, oh, you know. this man did not play. Like so, he was serious, and I I applauded him, and I was very proud of him like, because I, I knew what he was trying to do. Be a husband. So, yes, I was, and so, I saw him be a husband. For me, for me. So I didn't understand at the time. I didn't understand at the time how to deal with like pain or loss. I had never suffered pain or loss. So in this way and this it, ever like i'd never like not like that like i i thought i knew pain and loss mm. but i hadn't truly known pain and loss until that moment right mm. so up until that point i was wilding i was in the streets of guam every single night goddamn right <laughs> and like i would i would like talk to girls and i'd be like oh yeah like shout it when, when i come back to america like, when i come back to america like yeah we can see what's up like it was awesome shit like that right so I live with my sister since I was 15 and a half, 16, right? And so her children were like my little sister, my little brother, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what they were to me. So her daughter dies when I'm in Guam 
And at the time, it was super hard because the Navy didn't see it as my little sister. They saw it as, oh, that's your niece. Uh, we can't really afford to give you a free ticket off the island. Uh, can you wait a week before you leave? And it was just like, in that moment, I didn't understand pain. Like I was suffering so bad because I was just like, I just lost this one person that has just always been so pure to me. She never did anything wrong. She was just so pure. And it was just gone. And on top of it's gone, I can't even be there. So if I get home and I go to the funeral and we do all that stuff. And it's obviously really hard. I'm very, 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 very close with my sister. So it's super hard. And this like this like this idea just grew in my head to where I was just like, yeah, I have Steve and I have all these friends, but I want I want a family. Like I don't want to be alone anymore. Mm -hmm. And like that was the idea. It was just that. and it just it de it wouldn't stop. Like it, it it became like it's all I ever thought about. Yeah. Like instead of pain anymore, like going through situations, yep. it was just constantly I don't want to be alone. So this girl that I had known since high school, when I was talking to her, and I was like, oh, look, she already has a son. She's clearly a good mother. She's already raising her son, and she's raising her son by herself. And I looked past just numerous red flags. Oh, Steve, the flags. Steve would tell me all the time. I would tell him something she would do, and he'd you be like. You thought you were a bull, and you wanted to charge no, towards no. those red flags. It, well, uh, but Steve would literally look at me and be like, bro, and like, and he, we support each other over everything. Yeah. But he knew where I was going. And he was like, nah, bro, like, don't do that. Don't do that. My don't sister, that. my sister's like, I know what you're doing. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like, and the two people that everyone else was supportive, but the two people that meant the most in the equation were like, hey, look what you're doing. So again, we were just talking. Like we were talking, we were like, oh yeah, like when I come back to America, like I had a, what, nine months left? Yeah. And I was like, all right, when I come back to America, like when I come back to America, when I come back to America. And then her son, her son, he got sick. He got sick, he got like really bad pneumonia. And she didn't have insurance, she was in college. And she was like trying to take him to a doctor, but like they wouldn't accept him under her, grand her mother's insurance. So a whole bunch of stuff. And I just, left i literally just i was like steve i'll be back took leave went to chicago where she was went to the courthouse in indiana got married put him on my insurance yep. right so i was like oh this is what's gonna be right so fast forward right nine months later i come back to america she's finishing school right <laughs> so i take nate right and she was like oh i'm only gonna be in school for like a month and a half like, could you just, you know, start the house, get the house, have Nate, get him enrolled in school? Cool, like. Dad shit. Dad shit. Keep in mind, I had never raised a child in any capacity, right? So, I take Nate. How old are you right now in this scenario? I think you're 24? Yeah, I was like, you're 23, 24, right? 23 to mid 20. Yeah. yeah. A baby. Yeah. So, I take Nate, right? Baby adult. Like, like to the point where I'm on YouTube. Learning how to potty train on YouTube, learning yep. proper depth. Be in techniques. the Cheerios, dog. Exactly. Like, gamify. That was the game. Gamify, yeah, dog. I, told, bro, I was so hyped. Like, I called this man so <laughs> hype. I was like, bro, I got <laughs> Oh man. But like one and a month, though. one and a half months turned to nine and a half months. Right. She never came back, and I had Nate, and I became obsessed with this little boy. Like that was my boy. Like to the point where he called me daddy. I saw like every single day. All I did was like live for him like that was it i worked it didn't matter it was like oh i gotta get home tonight we go to parks we go we go to yep. the amusement park we you do picked up the nature of that bro, shit. Bro, yeah bro, real instantaneously, quick instantaneously right it's in you and we, we would do everything right mm -hmm. so she gets there and keep in mind i have he's he's healed me so i'm not mourning anymore like he did what i wanted from them yeah. he did it yeah. yeah but she gets there and it's like, I live with the Wicked Witch of the West. And she's a different person. Like, she's nothing the same that she was. And, like, she would just come up with these lies. And these lies would be just so ridiculous that you'd be like, wait, what? Like, like how am I having this conversation with you right now? 
And and then I would, on top of her just like lying about things, she would accuse me of shit while lying about things that was just stupid. Yeah. yeah. She like, to realize that maybe your daddy didn't walk out for nothing. Bro. <laughs> bro. Like, 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 cause you know. Oh, so like, so remember, remember. Like, one of y'all is lying. Mama, you goddamn tripping. <laughs> so, so y'all remember? Oh man, little Nate. So, uh. so, I, so I told y'all, I, I told y'all she was in school, right? School. So she comes back, and I was like, all right, like you know, Nate's in school. I work every day, like, and she'd always talk about how bored she was, and she didn't have any friends. And I was like, y'all living in New Jersey at this point, right? New Jersey, right? Yeah, y'all stationed. She living on base in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, well, I was like, well, why don't you, like, you know, get a job? You just got your degree. And she was like, oh, well, Jeremy, I want to tell you something, but you can't be mad at me. See, that's a trap. She did that <laughs> twice. She did that twice. Both of them were mm. OD. Yep. First time was that when she was a freshman, she was wilding out in school and messed up her GPA and wasn't going to be accepted in any school. So she went and got a fake social security number to go back to school. And when we got married, because obviously her real social security number, uh, she didn't. She had never really gone to school, so she didn't actually have any education and couldn't work. So then she blamed that on me, because. Okay. So I'm like, all right. So. <laughs> okay. So again, oh, it is, this is what we're doing. Bro, he didn't exist. We don't even care. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> exist. <'Cause>. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't exist. <laughs> But, uh, so then it just kept on getting worse, but, like, the whole time, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be divorced because of Nate. Because at the time, like, I, at the time, I, I was his dad, but according to the Navy. Like, I wasn't his father on some, like, adoption shit. Yeah. yeah. I was, like, his dad according to the Navy. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so then at, she always used to, like, accuse me of, uh, sleeping with my junior sailors. Oh, that's always. And anyone oh, that yeah. knows me, the, oh, like, know knows that, that I'm just, like... So ridiculously against the idea. Like, it's like, I, I, no. I, I treat my junior say like I'm a papa figure. Like, right. I've always been like that. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm like mother hint. I'm blocking you from yeah. the bullshit. Yeah. And she'd always accuse me, always accuse me. And one particular, this one particular girl, she used to always think. Mm -hmm. Be pressed about. Press. Yeah. Always, always, always. Like, one, like, group chats, I'd be like, oh, do anyone want coffee? Like, my whole, it's 30 people on a chat. Yep. Anyone want coffee? You bought her coffee. One girl would respond, hey, can you give me a cup of coffee? Oh, my God, you bought this bitch coffee tonight. Like, Bruh. Like, like some Bruh. dumb shit. Like, <laughs> so, one night, she comes to the gate. And um, she sees me there, and I, I, I'm, she's like dropping off my lunch. Mm -hmm. And she sees me up there, and she sees that that girl is standing in the gate. I was like in the back office, I came out. And I come out there, and she's like, oh, she sees that she's there, right? And she's like, oh, kiss me, kiss me right now. Because she wanted me to kiss her in front of and that, in front of old girl. girl. That's the yeah. wildest Bruh, thing. Why? Girl, Bruh. Like, cause like, 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 yeah, all but, the time. But, like, all of a sudden, she's. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't never rubbed my shoulders <laughs> so, in front of people before. All of a sudden, <laughs> she's trying to establish dominance. Yeah, right. And uh, she played a game by herself exactly. because old girl is not no, she's, playing like, no, at all. all. So she does this shit, right? And I'm like, like, stop! Like you know better. And she gets mad, like peels off on the gate, like, mm. like on some wild shit. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, you know better than Just this. Peel shit. out of the federal insulation, right? <laughs> So I get, like, on that night, she 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 puts her shit on, do not disturb, doesn't answer my phone calls the whole night, right? Oh, trying to punish you or something. So shit. I get home, <laughs> I get home, I take a shower, I get Nate up for school, I take Nate to school, I get in the bed, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, what you mean? Like, I'm just getting in the bed, right? And she's like, no, this ain't your fucking bed, you can't sleep here, you worrying about this other bitch, da 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 and it, keep in mind, I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 12-hour shifts. Like, I'm tired. It's Friday. I'm like, I just work Friday. I'm about to go to sleep. So I was like, I'm not even going to argue with you. Like, I'm not even going to. So I go to the guest bedroom, and I go lay down, right? So she comes in, like, an hour later and wakes me up. And she's like, Jeremy, get up. Nate's school just called and said they're going to let them play in the snow today. You need to bring him a jacket. Now, keep in mind, she don't have no job. She sits at the house every single day. <laughs> I woke him up so I, you didn't have to wake up to take him to school. You were fully awake to get the phone call. Under what circumstance would you wake me up? Right, like you could bust his mission. 
Yeah. Like, no, and like when I tell you the school is walking distance is less than a quarter of a mile. Bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. That's right. And she had a car. And I bought her a car. Sound like entitlement. Bro. So she's like, you need to take him a jacket. And I roll over. I was like, you take him a jacket. Like, what What are you doing? So this this is when he, it's fitting to get wicked. <laughs> <laughs> this is when he got wild, right? She, she, she comes back in the room. With a hamper full of dirty laundry. Right? And I'm asleep. I'm laid back down. I'm not asleep yet. She dumps the dirty laundry on me. And she says, get up, you lazy, N-I-G-G-E-R, hard R. And my wife was white. So, I had never been talked to like, like, I had been called a nigga before. Many a times. But in that context, yeah. in that moment, that right racial there, violence in it relationships. It was so aggressive to me. Right. And I like jumped up, like like aggressive. Like I jumped out the bed. Like it hit me, hit me. And she's like, What? Hit me, you pussy, hit me. You won't fucking hit me. You're, she's like, You're such yeah. a fucking pussy. She's like, You care about the Navy too much. She starts mushing me. Right? Again, I'm very, 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 very against hitting women. But I got on the goddamn phone. <laughs> I came, I'm new to the command too. Like they don't know me like that. I'm right. Like, I'm right. like, hey, y'all gotta send a unit to my house. Come get me. Like she's trying to beat me up. I have my hands up like this. Like I'm. Yeah. Like you know the you know the protocol. I know the protocol. Cause I know <laughs> right. how people get jammed up. Yeah. She's throwing pictures off the wall, smacking my head. I'm getting cut on the face and shit. Extra. So I go. They they put me in what they call CDO bunk room, right? Mm-hmm. So they put me in the CDO bunk room. It's command duty officer. Yeah. And um, I'm staying there. And like he's, I'm talking to my chief, and he's like, "What do you want to do?" I said, "I want her out of here. Like, I do not, like, I can't, I can't be with her in any capacity, right?" And I go to the store, like, we, he takes me to the store, and I try to swipe my card, and it gets declined, right? And I was like, "What the fuck?" And I look at my account, silly me, silly me. Had a joint bank account. She, she took every dollar out, right, to the point where like she, she was gangster with it too. I'll give her credit, gangster. Took. The every dollar out and then at my bank you get uh plus five hundred. Oh plus five. She yeah. took all that out yeah. too. So she was she took out like thirty six G's plus the five hundred out the account, right? So I'm I'm broke, bro. Like dead the fuck, bro. And I go to Navy Federal, Navy Federal was like, Oh, well you had a joint bank account. She had like had to take a five thousand dollar deduction to take out that much Just money. Take it out, yeah. yeah. She give a fuck. Didn't care. And then um she knew, like, it was like she was, like, set up. Like, I was set up. She knew all the laws. She, like, so then the next day, uh, she came to the base, and she was beat up. And she said, I beat her. Luckily for me, I was staying in that CDO room. So there's yep. a camera on the door. So they saw that I never left. So they banned her from base. But then she, like, came back with a lawyer after that and was like, oh, well, I'm on his page, too. So he needs to provide substance for me. Like, she, it was like she would... Like, whole set up the whole system. Like, knew the whole military Just protocol. Yeah. Like, shit, I didn't even know, right? Yeah. And then, at the time, because I was in New Jersey, had really shitty laws, I had to pay alimony until I was legally divorced, right? Mm. So I had to pay seventeen seventy five a month to her until we were legally divorced. Uh, and she got she got to push for 18, 18 months before we were legally divorced. And keep in mind, you know, she took all that money out, right? So, and base housing, they... They, you can't live there by yourself. So, like, I had to, like, move on. I was oh, in yeah. slums no. in New Jersey. I remember. Yeah. I remember. You remember that. Yeah, I remember that yeah, shit. You were. It sound like hearing yeah. my, my daddy's story. Bro, that's what right. I'm saying. Like, so, like. My dad's story. Yeah. And divorce and child support and how ruthless. No, yeah, man. And it's, it's crazy because, like, I'm not jaded in any capacity in regards to, like, wanting children or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like in that situation, I definitely gained... I lost a lot of money. Yeah. But I gained like 10 years of wisdom. Yeah. But I definitely judge who I associate associate with and who I date completely differently. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I would, when I originally would go into relationships, I would go into relationships like with, I would guess, I would say below standards. Like, I would go into a relationship with, Oh my God, like she's beautiful or she's a really dope person or she has these things going for her. Mm -hmm. And I don't think like that anymore at all. I think every time I go in a relationship is what do you have to match me? Because 
because I'm coming with this, 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 and this. Yeah. What what energy are you going to manifest that makes me want to do better for myself? Yeah. Because if I do better for myself, it does better for everybody. Yeah. You make me want to support but I mean, the Sometimes it's not even her matching you. Right. It don't. It's her willingness to submit. It, get, yo, what it's, you got cracking. It's right. not even a. You're right. right. It's not it's a like, ma- I don't I'm need just you to being do a what team I do. player in that yeah. sense. Where it's like, it's not a submit thing. I know people use that word but very. Submit is the word. Yeah, we, we but that's what the word negative. is, right? But in definition, it's not a negative it's word. Not. Yeah. It's Cause not. It's a lot of power submission. Motherfuckers submit to their clock every day. They we show up and they submit. We submit to crews. We submit to culture. We submit to what is and isn't mm-hmm. okay to drink and wear and exactly. all that shit. So submission is not the issue. It's just our people, as we've seen some of our elders now made a conversation last year, feel like submitting to. Our men's will is an instant negative. Yeah, yeah, no, you're instant negative. Like, you're what? You're yes. definitely, you're definitely right. Because right. I don't need a girl to do everything I you do. Don't need her to match you. I don't need that at all. At all. It's just when she gonna get down with you, woman. Like, it's like one of your homeboys doing you something. Like you gonna fuck with what I'm fucking with, or exactly you're gonna fight me every step of the right. way. Right. Because somebody has to lead, and then the leadership also like pivots because we all have strengths. It's like a spectrum. We all have strengths mm-hmm. where it's like. Hey, I don't like just with just our in our friendship. Yeah, like there's been things like when, when you were younger, I was able to show you a lot of shit. Yeah, but now you're older, and I can sit back and be like, oh shit, Jeremy knows how to do this. That's pretty yeah. fucking dope. Like Daniela, like it it always yeah. always always yeah. switches. It's not like this whole like oppressive thing. Yeah, it's not oppressive. Yeah, man. that I, people try to make out to be. One of the wildest things I'm looking at now is now having spent some time with my father, seeing who he is and where he is now in life. Mm-hmm. Bruh, he is everything my mama ever motherfucking wanted and needed. Mm. Mm. He's right there. Mm. Yeah, she wants somebody to be eh, 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 eh. right. Like, he's literally like that. Right. My father. Right. But she couldn't give that to him. Yeah. Then. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She yeah. couldn't give. She couldn't have been him. ready. It was like it's a good idea, and but if him, you're not ready to be with that person, yeah, and he's, like, like, he's like he's like he's like when I met your mom, I thought. No way she gonna do me wrong. Right. Mm. He like I'm a kappa. This how he thinking. I'm mm. a kappa. You know I'm working for NASA. I was on the I was a news broadcaster in my hometown in Philly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I got my shit together. Like right. I'm a good guy. I don't beat bitches. I don't. I'm not a weirdo. None of that shit. Mm-hmm. And st- and the fact the thing that tore him up the most was that even doing everything he did, reaching all these goals, he still got fucked over. Right. Well, I'm a saint. Still got. Yeah. He like he like I'm in Texas paying California child support on a case that I opened, mm, just Jesus. to have it on record. Yeah, mm. you know, like and it's yeah. Just, just like like I'm working three jobs just to keep that shit up. Yeah. And then when I hear from you, it ain't nothing but disrespect because you don't even know right what I'm doing and what I'm going through, and all you hearing is from her. Mm. You know, like that shit is that shit is so mind numbing. Yeah, shit. yeah. yeah. It's dog thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that, and like. If she had just to me, and it's probably obviously it's a wish at this point because we've grown now. Mm-hmm. But if she had, if she could see in him what she sees in me, because right. my mother puts me on a pedestal. Most mothers do put their sons on pedestals. Yeah. If she could see that shit, then everything would have played out so much differently. But she was like, you know, and Kevin be talking about the, the '90s women, yeah, and how they got married to the system, yeah, and that and that and that's what it is. And like that's she what felt I... so empowered by the system that mm. it was like, why even? Oh, he don't got feelings. What are his feelings? Now I could probably talk to my mom and be like, you know, he was really torn up about mm. that time. Right. And now it's like now it's only it has to like she like I could see my mom comprehending it, but it's still like a little afterthought mm-hmm. nature about it. Like, huh? Well, you know, it just is what it is. But it's like, bro, like y'all don't even understand. Y'all don't even understand <laughs> the power of 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 fatherhood yeah. and, and paternal fatherhood. And that it's not just like a nut to niggas. It's yeah. not just a nut. Yeah. If any of you you've all bust many nuts, but if you knew you had a child out there, I could I, I feel confident to know to know every nigga in this room oh, yeah. would feel some way about that. I would drop what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm oh, on I got the way. a whole scene nah. out here. You know what I mean? Like, and we and we came from a system in the '90s, at least, that created this idea that men don't have no feelings. Right. 
that men are pretty much just workhorses. And if he ain't doing what you want, girl, if he ain't doing with exactly everything you want, even if you don't know what the fuck you want. Exactly. You just throwing demands on niggas. Yeah. You don't even know what the fuck you want. And operating out of emotions is not what you, we need in order to actually get, because that's there's no longevity in it, mostly. There's no longevity in that emotionality. No, it's not. Yeah. And it's detrimental and it's damaging. And then here we are. Man, think about the <laughs> think about our think about our male friends who operate specifically off emotionality. Yeah. If I operated my six foot five, two fifty ass mm -hmm. operated off my emotionality when mm -hmm. people disrespect me, get in my face mm -hmm. and, and start to act really fucking sideways to me, mm -hmm. I would be in jail, no, it, it would be a fucking problem. The Definitely. thing that people project on me when they say they are afraid of me, right. I would be that, and they would be more afraid of me than they would actually fucking have any reasonable understanding of. Right, hundred percent. Because our friend group, our uh, how we've been trained, how we've been moving in this world, it's been very different. Mm. So, but it's 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 insanity, man. And Jeremy, thank you for telling that that yo. Speaking on your life, man. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, every time on the night show, we like to <laughs> get in with it. <laughs> you know? Thank we, you for speaking on that we, shit, man. We, we made it out the mud, though. Like, with, yeah. like, like, like Your story is what made me not even want to get married. Not your story specifically. Yeah, the horror story. Yeah, it's yeah. like, yo. Yeah, but you know what I find so funny about that is it, it, definitely, it definitely changed my perspective for some years. But it didn't like you know some people be like cut off forever. Again, type shit. No. And that's my thing. I feel like now, I've learned to embrace yeah. it in ways to understand marriage. Yeah. I don't have like a disdain for marriage. I just know that in previous generations and what I was watching, they had that shit twisted. Oh yeah. They yeah. had the wrong idea about what the fuck marriage was even supposed to mean, especially in context of the system. It's one thing to be with somebody. That's easy. Like, well, that's not easy. But it's one thing to be with somebody. It's another thing to put it on paper. Yeah, yeah. It's a different game. Uh, def definitely rules and regulations. Now we uh we have multiple bank accounts. You know we share one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh, all the bread does not go to the to same location. To backtrack to why we went into that segue and that tangent that was beautifully uh, illustrated by Brother Sully over here. Um, the reason why I said I wanted to get married is because. I saw the family dynamic of not being married. And um, obviously my mother and stepfather are married, but their relationship is uh, uh, unique. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm the product of seven kids. My mother is just me and my sisters in Harvard. My father, you know, almost every kid has their own parent. So um, I initially just wanted that more so for two things. I mean, I understand that the cat's not it's not gonna uh, run. It's, it's not gonna just. I don't have no cat repellent spray, so it's gonna keep chasing me. So I wanted to, you know, at least at least have that one significant woman in my life be like, look, like you're important to me enough for me to like dedicate this to you and us to have a special day, um, you know, because uh, it's not hard to get women out here. It's hard to want to keep women. That's the, that's that's the key. So if, once I found that. Once I find out one woman that I'm willing Speaking to keep from privilege, Larry. It's hard for a lot of men to get women out. Okay, yeah. well, it's, it's not hard for. Well, but it's but right. so here's the here's 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 what so all all you young cats, man, you know what I'm saying? You young cats out there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a a little drill right now, man. It's not hard to get women. It's hard for you to get women, and that and the reason that is is because. One, do you want you? Mm. And if you want you, then everything else in life will come to you because you attract what you are. So the greatest, my, my, my greatest learning lesson is the people you attract in your life are a reflection of where you are in your life. So you should always be improving yourself to improve what you're attracting. Right. And I appreciate the women that I've attracted in my life in my various aspects. I, Switch I, it up. It, it, Switch ain't, it, up. It, it ain't like that. <laughs> but the one I'm dealing with right now, you know what I'm talking about, she truly is a star, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to go real far. And uh, I'm going to have to go get her a diamond ring and do some shiny things because the, the lady is real beautiful. There we go. Thank nice. you, Larry. And she, <laughs> and, and she, uh, the 90s did this. The 90s did this to us. Ultimately, <laughs> she enhances me and my light. So because my light is shining so bright, you know what I'm saying? 
because she pours a lot of uh, racing fuel on it. You know what I'm talking about? The, uh, whatever it is for them rocket planes. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm intergalactic with my pimping. So, um, Larry, I'm gonna have to uh, <laughs> uh, get you to teach a, a young junior sailor some podium, symposium <laughs> about uh, how to not end up getting got in these streets. <laughs> hey, hey man, I got got too. So uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm no, no. I'm 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 speak on my four year relationship that uh, abruptly ended due to COVID and. Um, Due to COVID. Oh, due, yeah. due to COVID and my uh, emotional immaturity and uh, uh, se- several other uh, variables. But is um, it, no, 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 I can't hold stop you. Hold it's, not, it's not traditionally hold due on. to COVID. No, 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 no. It's hard to call that emotional immaturity when Shorty was much older than you. Like, oh, yeah. She have, was in a different era of her life. They already. call me the cougar tamer. You that that is definitely for sure. It's, <laughs> it's, easy, look, it's easy to call oh, God it. Damn. Look, look, I just want to say, it's easy for a, a woman with children and a baby father yeah. and older, uh, other no, you, age to call you immature. No, no, you, you're 100%. No, it's easy for her to do that. Yeah, before, exactly. before you get into that, you're 100% right. I dated a, a girl one, a woman, woman one time. Thank you. Uh, that was was amazing. I don't think there's such thing as a girl being out of your league. I don't think. Oh, so. I don't. I don't think it's a thing. True. I think no. There's no such thing as a girl being like Women. looks out of your league. It's stupid. I gotta stay because we no, make the no, league, no, baby. No, that's a we stupid. We make answer. the league. No, there's no such thing as that. But I will we say this. The trophies. I will say this. There is such thing as a girl being Women. emotionally out of your league, and when you when you you dabble with older women, mm. that happens. Yeah. Because your goals and your aspirations are on different levels than theirs. Oh, yeah. Man, it's probably kidding. I got one right now trying to make me some short ribs. If you, hey, y'all want to come up for dinner tomorrow, man? I got this little... You know, flying out to Alaska tomorrow, man. We're oh, okay. going to I the got this dirty, dirty. dirty. She's about to make a soul food plate. Night. Yeah. I got two nights in. This is three nights. How long have you been here? So, Friday. Friday. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like Larry the Cougar Tamer, man. So I, I, have, I have a lot of experience with <laughs> older women. And unfortunately, I dibbled and dabbled with this uh, lovely lady for four years. She's a great woman. She deserves the world. But I couldn't give it to her. And um, Why? I couldn't give it to her because I'm twenty something years old. I don't age. have wasn't the age. I don't have the resources for it. Does and she t- and the cold part is does that make you it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. But the cold, the cold part is when this thing started to fall apart and dwindle, she told me that. She said, Look. You go. You're gonna have X, Y, Z. She said you're gonna be extremely wealthy. You're gonna be able to do all the things you want to do, but you can't do it right now. And that's when I realized that oh, she's turning 35. She's hitting. She's, she's that wall is is freaking. She needs hard. Now. She needs it now. And she needs yeah. it now. She can't wait. And, uh, right. Right. Another five, My name is years. JG Wentworth, so I don't, I don't, you know, yeah. I, you I mean, know and, she needs it now, but and, I ain't and JG that's, Wentworth. And that's fine, man. You know, if two people kind of come together and they realize, hey, we actually do we are different places in our life. Different places. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that, no that's hard what, feelings, that's no different. nothing. That's why I wish that's you the just best. What it is. You know, I wish you the best. Yeah, a lot of people are not happy about that. I was actually looking at rings before that happened because I, I realized the value that she brought to my life. Um, well, I but. Wonder. Also, <laughs> I'm happy that that didn't happen because uh, she, my, my, my prices went up, baby. My choosing fee just went up. I'm like, brother, you know? she aged so, you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm young, beautiful, handsome, and wealthy. Man, and I'm, so and, and, <laughs> this, this is where it comes in. I truly love my brothers, and they know that. And um, I, I, I'm so happy to be able to say that every day oh, because yeah. in that four-year relationship, I wasn't uh, allowing myself really the space or time to really have these uh, intimate um, interactions with my brothers. Uh, obviously, there were there were um, mm. situations that were out of all of our hands that um, kind of kept us away, yeah. but uh, in that bay. But um, it's just a beautiful man when you see your brothers, man. You tell your brothers you love them, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, then, and then and then move in a spirit of love, man. Spirit in creation. Man, move in the spirit of you. Mm. Exactly. Let me, add. <laughs> Let me just add. And another said. thing. <laughs> I'm just saying because because. I've been in it. I've been in this one relationship for a third of my life, mm. right? Yeah. And I swear to God, the only thing that has made this—not the only, but one of the biggest things that has kept this afloat and up—is my willpower. Sorry, sorry. sorry. You good? My willpower to still move how I want it to move. Yeah. Now the thing about that is defining what that means to you, because mm-hmm. a lot of niggas let the culture define what how they want to move. Right. You think wanting to move means I can fuck whoever I want. Right. 
hang out however I want. That's not moving how you want to move. No. Moving how you want to move is looking at who you are and where you're trying to go. Right. And moving accordingly and not letting the woman in your life's emotions get in the way of that. Yeah. Like, there's a power there. You know? mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, I just don't want y'all to feel like anybody that may see this or be watching this to feel like that having a relationship is automatically going to be uh, detrimental to your other goals. Mm. Only if you allow it. Yeah. And if you're dealing with a person that can't accept that or they don't see it in you, or really they're not accepting that because they don't see it in you, then that lets you know everything right there. Yeah. She don't even see me as that type of a person. Right. She don't see that value in you. Right. And I've been dealing with this one girl for this long because she's always been able to see the value in you. One hundred percent. And not and not letting other women's approaches and it's like you know you got girls that say they want to deal with a high value name. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm high value, but just growing up where we come up, right? We have our values, right? So at in that space and that time, I was. If you gonna deal with that, you gotta take this. Mm. What you think? Nobody else want this exactly. guy. Exactly. Nobody else want to deal with him. Nobody's gonna try. Don't niggas try you at the grocery store? Exactly. You by yourself? Oh, that's at different because I just brush them off. Yeah. But, uh, no. It's the same. I'm it's, doing the same shit. It's the same. And also, there's still even a dynamic difference because part of the reason you brush them off don't even affect me. A woman has a danger aspect when yeah. it comes to mm. people talking to them in the street that we just do not have. Yeah, right? You don't feel threatened by a girl looking at you across the gas station. I don't know, man. Some of these cougars, don't. bro. They be... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's joking, but 100% you yeah, but it's 100% real. right there. And that's there. something that yeah. could, uh, uh, your well, your girl will use that in arguments with you like, oh, right. if it's me, you know, you wouldn't feel the same way and you got to be man enough with yourself yep. and with her and be like, yes, it is different. Like you got to we have to stand on our differences as much as we stand on our similarities. If there's an obvious difference, there's an obvious difference. Right. Nah, right. No, and, 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 no. <laughs> you went in. There, there's there there is that 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 dynamic, and that's the thing that when we keep talking about bigger parts of our society, where it's like you see the difference. You see, like you know, women will admit the difference between men and women when it talks about safety, because they're like, yeah. oh, there are dangerous men out here. Yes, yeah. there are. Men know this. Yeah, we know it. Like, well, ninety percent of men of are killed men by men. Yeah. Like, we understand that there are dangerous men out here. Right. Like, that is a real, real understanding of what, 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 what we interact with on a daily basis. We've been seeing that since we was little kids on the playground. Right. Like, we test each other's steel all right. the time. Right. Um, so, it's like, we still need to be very present with one another. We still need to be very active with one another. We still need to be very cognizant. And, like, yeah. that's different when, that, that's very different when you're talking about the safety aspect. When men talk about safety in relationships, yeah. it's betrayal. It's it's betrayal on so many levels because I feel like um, the situation with, with Jeremy, mm-hmm. like my last like very serious long term relationship, mm-hmm. it was that. Mm-hmm. It was the this woman who's your subordinate. I think she wants to. You know, hook up with you. She wants to take you from me. This, yeah. that, and the other. Right. And I'm like, I need you to stand on your ten toes, right? And look me in my eye and know that I'm gonna be here for you, right? Regardless. And know who you are. And know who you and are. And even regardless of everything, yeah. even if I do slip, you got the power to move on for me. Exactly. Like, who are you really? If I slip up. That's my fault. That's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> That's not her fault hmm. because she doesn't owe you loyalty. People, your enemy can't betray you. Right. Right. It's your, it's the closest to you that can betray, betray you. So you yeah. don't, you don't pull up on them. You should pull up on me. Right. But I'm not gonna ever be that person. Right. Never gonna be that person. Right. Bruh. Oh, I'm saying. Oh, oh, different kind of beer. No, we can yeah. switch that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my beer at, Jeremy? Do you want one? So oh, you uh, buying them? You gotta, see me beerless I'm, out I'm here. Sound beerless. <laughs> Parched. My throat's desperate right now. <laughs> I'm a man of numbers. I'm a man of math. And um, oh, one thing that I like the most is this concept of reciprocation. Now, reciprocation means that you know uh, uh, something of equal is returned. Now. We have a, a misconstrued interpretation of recipro- reciprocation. It's into the to the aspect of what you Some give out, you eight. expect to receive. 
But you have to understand that not everybody has the same love language. Um, True. So as long as the frequency of energy uh, is received and um, more more than that, that person that you're dealing with, because I, I understand uh, us, us, these men at this table, we love the ladies. So we're speaking from that aspect. But I'm going to talk to you, all, all you humans out there. So the person that you're dealing with is supposed to want to see that light in you shine as bright as you want to see that light shining in them. Exactly. Because you two, as a relationship, as you relate to each other, are supposed to help bring out the best and build the best person with that person. That way it benefits the relationship in totality. That's why they say, uh, uh, in the in a, uh, layman's terms, what do you bring to the table? It's mm. not you are the table because that's a freaking lame ass fucking conversation. Mm. It's it's we need to eat, so I'm about to go bring this meat. Are you got any vegetables for this for the side for side side dishes? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you should want me to thrive. Exactly, and that's yeah. when you look at it, especially y'all know what I do yeah. and how I've moved. At least in the past, we don't know where it's going going forward. But in the past, it's like, yo, attention from from other women has pretty much been built into the package. Yeah. Like, it's there. Could you imagine if my girl tripped on me at all the way any of y'all girls have tripped on y'all by no, anything? You, like, you've seen <laughs> women that I've been dating. Bruh, my brother trip. right here has had a woman trip on him vicariously. Like, you not even the subject on no. the stage, bruh. No. It's like you're there. <laughs> and working. With a man. <laughs> exactly. Getting touched and danced on. But imagine, while she's tripping hard, my girl is literally there. Yeah. Watching this full nude woman. Yeah. Dance on me. Yeah. Knowing that the yep. woman is actually interested, but just the reality. Like, yeah, the, she cool because she's like, oh, that's my nigga. I know what the deal is. Oh my God, how popping is this? Right? This is dope. Look at all these women trying to be with my man. I'm going home with him right. at the end of the night. And knowing that he's not really that type of man. Exactly. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a they used to call me a whore in mm -hmm. high school. Oh. And I want y'all, everybody knew me in high school to know that that hurt my feelings. <laughs> you bastards. Because I wasn't a whore. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I had a lot of girlfriends. Back to back to back to back to back to back. You know, in high school, it could be quick. Yeah. It could yeah. be like yeah, one month, two months, next yeah. girl, next girl. Yeah. There was a point I remember yeah, girls was telling, I was a little girl telling the bitch, like, when he going, when she going to give us a chance to date him? I remember us. hearing <laughs> shit like that, like, in high school. And then they called me the whore. And I was damn near. just exercising your options. And I even know they was options. No, right? Because you're just young. You, you don't, don't young. you like, have nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Bitches breaking your hearts See, too. They breaking your heart too. Like exactly. you ain't even like you just a villain out here. I was gonna say I was like the opposite. Like I was in high school, like oh, I was in high school chilling, not not too crazy. Guam, oof, Guam. Don't talk about that place. See, I didn't <laughs> get to get. I didn't get to leave. I yeah. didn't go to college like outside mm. the state. I she didn't went, go anywhere. Yeah. So everything, my whole college type lifestyle, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, I just lived. I lived it all out. Here, which He's is something else spot. that I had to learn about. I was like, yo, or understand. It's like the wildness that I had in certain ages of my life. I was going to be that way no matter where I was at. Yeah. I just happened to have to live that out in my hometown. Mm -hmm. I didn't go join the army. I didn't go to an out-of-state college or nothing. Yeah. So, like, we lived that yeah, out right here. Spe yeah. Speaking of that, uh, we're going on a vacation real soon uh, to another <laughs> we, we gotta introduce you to wilder things. Not, not, not on the lady regard. Just you know, life experiences. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. We're gonna have so much fucking fun. And who knows how it'll change me? Yeah. Cause I told you, I told, I told you about the story about the lady I was crying. I'll never forget. I've met like three or four people in my life that I feel like was like divine intervention. Mm. Like they might not have even been human. That's how deep I feel about it. Like Oof. it was just a moment so strong. And this one woman was like asking me like you know what i've done where i've been da, da, da. she had seen my videos at that time and she was just like oh i remember this yeah you never been here i was like i mean i've been in like memphis little shit like just quick shit and then she just literally started crying i'm like why is she crying and shit like i'm just looking at how you are and you haven't even seen anything you know what the craziest part about that particular story is when when me and true were just really getting to know each other i mentioned to him 
I was like, bro, like you and me have to go overseas somewhere. And then he told me that story. Like I had already <laughs> had that mindset. Like God, damn, like this motherfucker. Like if he goes somewhere else, like I already know, like it's going to be completely different. Yeah. Because like I, luckily for me, I've been to you know so many places. Yeah. But my favorite thing from places is experiencing people's culture at the rawest form. Yeah. A lot of people go traveling, they go to the resort, they go to only the tourist spots. Yeah, yeah. some people go and just get drunk somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's the whole and, trip. They yep. just get fucked up somewhere else. And, mm-hmm. and, there are, and there are hours of the day that are dedicated to that exact experience also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you have to really go experience, like, the root of people's culture. Because the same way that you are just so hell-bent and dug into your culture mm. they are for theirs mm. like we had the the most entertaining experience so like the funniest thing about that like so i grew up in houston right mm. this man's daddy that he went and saw three weeks ago <laughs> lives down the street <laughs> from my family we, he, keep in mind we've been hanging out just, we had no idea it was down the street so right so i found so much like great enjoyment talking to him after he got back because the vibe he felt in Houston. Mm. And uh, I always, you know, we're proud as hell where we're from. Houston black as hell, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 sir. That's and, a strong black. And I, and I told him, I told him, I was like, bro, I can't wait until you go to Houston so you understand the perspective I'm coming from. Mm. And he came back and was like, I see. Like, I get it. And I was like. And you I, only get it from going there. Yeah, and you, 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 you could to talk about it all the time. It's just, it's different. I did the same thing with this man. I took this man to Houston. Right, oh, now yeah. imagine we go back as a all, circle. Oh, yes. Because that was just me coming back with my own in, in, independent experience. Yeah. And imagine I, we go together because obviously it's things that you would show me. Oh, yeah. my father. Because he's still my father. I'm putting it's my not gonna show. I'm the goddamn tour guide in this bitch. <laughs> I'm putting my damn hat on and we getting to it. Hmm. The entire way. It's finna get wicked. <laughs> and, I feel, and I feel for my limited travels, I feel confident enough in my energies. I feel like I could pretty much meld anywhere I fucking go. Oh no! Yeah. Again, like I said, I, I think that's important to have. I love to travel. Mm. I will travel by myself before I'll travel with an unworthy party. <laughs> period. Oh, one thousand. I do not. We are. We've been down this road too many times. We've been We're not down. doing We're it. We've been not doing it. So we're not uh, doing it. <laughs> when I invite someone to like travel with me, like that's on some like real shit. Like I'm like that shit's sacred to me. Yeah. Like I feel like when you when you show me some shit, like you're like oh, I'm working on this. I mm. feel I feel love. Like I'm mm. like oh like he's showing me this in its rawest form. Right. I respect. It. <laughs> I. I like to create content. I like to travel the world. Mm. So when I go somewhere and I go experience something, mm. it's sacred. Like, I'm not bringing just random old... I've done it. Just trying to have a crowd type I, shit. I've done it. And it's it's, it's not it. Like, yeah. you go you go on these experiences and you're like, oh, he, he isn't worthy of this. Right. Like, this person shouldn't be experiencing this like this. Right. Because a lot of times what will happen is you'll take these people... That aren't on that same wave, right? Bruh. And they want to only see the tourist shit. And you take them to do some other shit. And they have the audacity to be like, oh, let's let's hurry up and move around. <laughs> let's do something else. Mm. And it'd be like, what? Like, I had that, that experience. So when I went to Transylvania, right? Mm. I had a great time in Transylvania. Mm. But the people I went to Transylvania with were relative strangers. Mm. And they had just heard of my other travels. Like, mm. I would talk to people at work and be like, oh, I've been here, I've been here, I've been here. Yeah. And, like, they knew every weekend I was going somewhere else. Yeah. So they were like, they begged me. They were like, hey, like, <laughs> like let's go to, like, let me go with you on your trip. Yeah. They bought the ticket. I was like, cool, like, oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, but remember, yeah. I ain't never been there either. Right. So it's one thing when you've been somewhere before. Yeah. But I have never been there. So right. I'm traveling how I travel. Right, right. And they were just like, not ready the for way. it yeah. they weren't ready for it and yeah. they were just like it was uh it was a lot of weird interactions <laughs> like hey and i'm gonna go back to the area of b and b i'm kind of tired mm. um just <laughs> knock on the door we only have one key on some like some like real wild shit but i already knew from 
our interaction a long time ago that I'm like, oh, like when we take him somewhere, <laughs> it's going to be worth it. Would you? Oh. What? Like, <laughs> wow, that's what? amazing. Because when me and him go places. Oh, like Thailand? Yeah, Thailand. Oh, and then you add that Tower 7 there? Oh, my God. Tower 7, bro. <laughs> by, the, by the way, can we please, uh, above anything else, uh, I don't like the repeat trips, but can we please uh, repeat Thailand? Please, and Done. thank you. Um, Done. I'll go back. Anytime, right? Such a good time. It's one of the most incredible. <laughs> Should have went of single. He, he was. Oh, I was, was such bro, a bro. good boy in Thailand. Hey, bro, when I tell you, <laughs> I was wild in Thailand. <laughs> this man, this man was a hundred percent just dedicated, hmm. and he was like, he'd look, and I, I you know. This is not the podcast to depict the debauchery that took place in Thailand. But <laughs> what I will say is, I was wilding. Mm. And I would look over at him. Because, again, Thailand, you know, it's land of the free. So a lot of times when I was, <laughs> a lot of the times when I was wilding was, you know, in the street. <laughs> so I would you know, in the street. street. <laughs> Yo, it would be like these tourists. They just walk up to this man. And he'd be like, they'd be like oh, did I start talking? Next thing I know, I turn my back and look. And he just, bro, because like what happened? When, engulfed, bro. When we <laughs> went, no, when we went, when we went to Thailand, there was like this festival. I guess there was a bunch, a bunch of Europeans. Mm. So these Europeans were over there, and then these Chinese girls were over there, which uh, really random. And I was just like vibing, and I would look over at Steve, and Steve was the Steve. Steve, one of my favorite people of all time to party with on all capacities because he's one of the few people it's a rare quality but it's a really rare quality to be able to turn up to the level of the surrounding you're in mm -hmm. even but if you're still be aware no no not even still be aware because mm. you know sometimes like you to dd right and it happens and when you do dd like you do dd you're like i'm having a good time coming with my friends but it's never truly there, mm -hmm. right? It's never truly there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I have some friends that are out, not in the military, and they'd be doing some other things. Mm -hmm. Again, your level of turn up and their level of turn up are completely different. Mm -hmm. Like me. A hundred percent. Right. hundred <laughs> <Yep>. percent. <laughs> Steve, and Steve built this in me because I, re I appreciated his so much that mm -hmm. I developed it. But I, see, I don't have it like Steve. Steve has it for everybody. I don't have it for everybody. Mm. I have it for Steve and certain people. Mm. But if I'm the if Steve was the DD, he would be just as turnt if he was drinking. Yeah. And he would still keep that energy because you know sometimes, especially if you're in a smaller group, mm. you're like you you feed off the energies, and one person's like not getting to enjoy themselves. And mm. we've been some places where like you have to drive, like there's no way around it. Yeah. Like well, there's no taxi. Like it's not like how it was. Yeah. But he always kept that energy. But at that particular time in Thailand, it was my birthday. And I was wilding, 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 wilding. And I would look back at him and he'd be turned. And I could see it in his soul that he was dedicated to the mission. But he was like, this nigga's really going crazy right now. Because I, I was going on my birthday. On my he birthday. I could see it in his soul. Bro, no. <laughs> because I was going too crazy. Like, he like, Steve looks very happy, but concerned. <laughs> bro, no, bro, bro we, me and this man, so we started drinking. So we, we got to Patia Beach, the craziest place on earth. Bro. On my birthday. So Patia Beach, craziest place on earth. We got there. And we started drinking at like 9.30 a.m. Yeah. Bro, we left the club <laughs> at 8 a.m. Mm. We left the club <laughs> at 8 a.m. There was a, still a line to get in the goddamn yeah, club. Yeah, bro. There was a line forming. To get in the folks club. Folks who had just got off work, yeah. who lived in Patia Beach, I'm trying to... to get into the club because they get party all day right. sleep all night go back to it and shit and we were like we wa like we went to like i'm gonna tell y'all this because this young lady needs a shout out and i and, and i was a very good boy to my then um uh I, i'll call my what i thought was gonna be my future wife and all that good stuff mm. 
There was this black Russian girl mm -hmm. doing splits in the middle of the club, mm -hmm. and she was all about me. Mm -hmm. Could not yeah, stop looking at me, she talking was to me. Black Russian, bro. Was all about Wild. it. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, Where are you from? Like, you can have it. You can have it. She was like, Oh, <laughs> I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh, I do a podcast and say, I just introduce people like. Mm -hmm. Podcast, you don't tell them I'm military. Plus, I don't know if they're like fucking Russian plants, yeah. Cuban, whatever. Mafia shit. Mafia yeah. shit. So it's like, oh, I'll just do a podcast and another. And then she, I had like my night show shit on. So she went on Instagram and found me. Mm. And then she just was like communicating. And it was very like PC, nothing crazy. I was like, not, if anybody, my grandma could have read those text Service. messages. And it was real good, real service level shit. Mm. So I thought like, oh, she was just really excited, you know. Europeans out here having a good time. Mm. And then eventually that shit got wicked. Mm. Fast. And she mm. was like, look, where are you staying? Is that because I I don't want to go to sleep tonight unless I'm underneath you. Mm. Bro. <laughs> and I, I was like, uh, bro, I can't and, talk to you anymore. <laughs> bro, we were in Thailand and like, we were there for 10 days. Mm. Right? And, like, we went all over Thailand. We didn't stay in one spot. Like, me and this man went everywhere, right? Hmm. I can't even count. I cannot even count the amount of times that someone, not of the working variety, someone of the tourist variety, walked up to me and was like, where are we going? And, yeah. like, it was like, wait, what? Like, on some like, and it'd be like some random ass shit. Like he said, yeah. it'd be like, so I know the feeling is some Hollywood shit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the same energy. It's That's that same why energy. that when we met that one girl at the uh, King Ted exhibit, yes. and we thought she was homeless. That's why. Uh -huh. <laughs> they come on you like that. Right, like, exactly. So where are we doing tonight? <laughs> but, but what I was that, saying, but I was just like the intro. I was like, all right, let's let's figure out these guys got the pulse. All right, and that's that's they, they like the energy. Yeah. But I'll cool. tell you. The people in Thailand, like on top of the, just the girls' experience, cheapness, everything like that, the people that live in Thailand, work in Thailand, are so humble and so nice that the vibe of everyone you encounter is so like pure mm. that you're there and you're just like happy. Like you're truly like purely happy. I can see that. And you're just like, oh, these people are just so incredibly nice. Mm hmm. We've had that a few times. Yeah. In different locations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit, man. Hey. Thank y'all. Of course. Been, <sighs> this has been dope. It's been a good one. It's dope as shit, man. Like, it's just good just to see some brothers out here just, like, talking and just letting it out, man. It's just fucking cathartic, man. Like, honestly. It's just, releasing. Yeah, it's releasing this shit out, man. Expressing. Hey, just, just for y'all's information, this might be my last podcast, though. Uh, going to Alaska tomorrow with Steve. Uh, I might not make it. <laughs> just, just, just wanted to be known. Stop saying that. Okay. Juno lifestyle might not yeah, make, make it. it. Oh <laughs> lord, I, I wasn't bored for the cold in any capacity in my entire life. It's just the I'm, cold he's worried about, not the bears. <laughs> not the bears. Oh, there's some bears out there. I, right? some bears out of there. The human have, you seen the, <laughs> have you seen the Revenant? They're that was for that was a, nations. Have you seen the have, pussy, have you seen the Revenant? <laughs> that was a precursor to my life. I ain't worried about no bears. <laughs> but nah, nah, the cold though, the cold. Cole's gonna be a situation. So, yo, don't be don't be afraid. Go get about three women. I'll keep you warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! Don't be afraid of your life. Don't be afraid of your uh, manhood or womanhood. Don't be afraid of 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 your experiences. Don't be afraid of your future. Because the future is nothing but an idea, mm. and the past is but a memory. Yeah. And all you really have is right now. And if you move in fear. And fear gonna move in you. And you won't get a goddamn thing from it. But if you move with power, and you move with consciousness, and consciousness don't mean sage and, 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 and cedar sticks and all that shit. <laughs> that, witch, that witchy <laughs> shit. Mm -hmm. And y'all watch me in the last few years, I done been around nothing but witches. New tape coming soon, I'll let you know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> don't let that shit throw you off, man. Just, Just... Just move. And if they're going to move with you, they're going to move with you. If they for you, you're going to see it. That's men, that's women, that's parents, that's friends, that's that's all of that. If they for you, they're going to move with it. Now, that's also, look, we got to get a balance. I don't mean being an idiot. <laughs> At all. Don't be stupid. Don't take advantage of this shit. But just if you keeping a level, and you know if you keeping a level, you know if you're trying your best, 
you know if you're trying to be a better person, if you can feel that shit within you, you know that if you can feel that, what I'm saying right now, roll with that shit. If they for you, they're going to be down with that shit because they can see it too. And if they can't see it, if they can't see it, you can't make them see it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to make them see it. Just keep being that shit. And you'll look up one day and find yourself surrounded by the best things that you could have ever even oh, ever hoped for and wished for. A room yeah, of right, extraordinary <laughs> gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cheers, brothers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Yeah. Thank you, Haru. For that. Sean Burton, any luck you know what I'm talking about. Out, man. Mm, mm, I don't know how you're going to chop and edit this, but always yeah, remember there's a whole lot there. of ing in the p-i-m-p so that means i'm not going for no bitch ass next time. Oh you know what I'm about? <laughs> all right, so let me get on this all right get on it you said what hold on fuck fear fuck fear fuck. so the feeling all Hell behind here, all of this right now <laughs> whatever that's rejection death and now embarrassment you feel me a thousand percent very proudly fuck fear so let me get this quote out real quick man hold on this is from one of my favorite creators, Hayao Miyazaki. You must see with eyes unclouded by hate, see the good in that which is evil, and the evil in that which is good. Pledge yourself to neither, but vow instead to preserve the balance that exists between the two. Yes. Night show. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Steve, you should make the...